Hey everybody, I'm going to walk us through briefly how I would assemble a fuselage in a 3D environment. I'm not going to go through this entire fuselage, I'm just going to do a couple of bulkheads, but I've gotten an awful lot of emails after I showed everybody how to bring a DXF um, rib or a bulkhead into Fusion 360 and assemble your uh, model in a virtual world. So I'm gonna jump into this because I don't want this to be a massively long video, but if you watch my earlier video, you saw how I took a DXF file, I uh, inserted or yeah, inserted it into Fusion 360 and then I extruded it and I made it one eighth of an inch thick, which is representing one eighth, one eighth inch light plywood. So to rotate these, I'm basically gonna hit, um, right click, hit move or copy. Over here, make sure it says body. I'm gonna pick this down here along this line down here because I want to rotate it on my like virtual workbench, okay? So I'm gonna pull that up to 90 degrees there. Kind of grab this little wheel here, rotate it around to 90. Okay, I'm gonna go up here and hit top in the right hand corner here. Now I'm looking straight down on it. If I grab this square right here, I can drag it anywhere I want in my 3D environment. So this is the firewall. On my airplane, I designed it tilted and we can tilt it later on, but right now I'm just wanting to line these up a little bit just um, you know, to get the initial fit so I can show you all what I'm doing. So hit okay, go back and look at it. And that's my first bulkhead, okay? I'm gonna hit uh, right click, move copy. Always make sure you're on this move type right here. It says free move, and that way you can move it anywhere you want in the uh, environment. And, uh, oh, I'm set on sketches here. It needs to say body. I'm gonna click it right here. Pull it to 90. I'm gonna rotate this to 90. I'm gonna look at it from the top. I'm gonna drag it over to where my next bulkhead goes. And right now I'm just getting them all roughly close. I mean, it does not have to be perfect. A lot of times I'll go back in and I'll check two or three times. Uh, let's do the next one. I'm only gonna do three or four of these. And oh, when I design all my airplanes, I design them so I can build the top half off my workbench and that keeps it square and true. And then as I uh, you know, um, wanna build the bottom of it, I'll build a saddle to hold the top of the fuselage, flip it upside down and then glue on the formers to the bottom. So I always build my fuselages in a top half and a bottom half. So I'm gonna hit move. I'm going to click the bottom cord of this. So I'm rotating it on my virtual workbench. And you get, you get the idea of what I'm doing right now. Um, I'll do another video in the future that shows how you do all the stringers and stuff. I don't want this to be a super duper long um, video, but um, you know, essentially what you're doing here is making sure that when you um, align all your stringers that they line up and that you're getting the shape of the fuselage that you want, okay? So like this airplane right here is designed, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, um, the motor box, hang on, let me rotate it. What I call the motor box, which is the box right here that comes out that you hang your motor off of, it would come through and stop here. The reason you see this line down here is that's where the landing gear well is on the bottom. And you can see those right here on these formers here. So basically, I'm just wanting to show you how I build it. Now, what does it look like when you're done? It looks like this. And this is many hours later, everybody. I mean, uh, 40 or 50 hours into building this. The cool thing about doing it like this virtually is you can put your servos. See, this has two servos for the ailerons. One of the things about this airplane I did not want to have to do is take the flaps on and off it just to take it to the airfield. I did not want the wing to come off. I wanted to sit on the wheels. So I made the outboard part of the wing here come off <clears throat> and all this stayed. It would clear the 86 uh, inches of the opening of my trailer. But if you were gonna build a 150 inch version of this, you would definitely wanna figure out how you're gonna put the wings on and off it. I don't like having all this landing gear with the way the doors and everything on the T28 work. I didn't want this wing to come on and off the fuselage. 
I want it to all be one part. So um, when I do go to build, and I am going to build this airplane at 150 inches or maybe 200 now that I'm liking to build really big airplanes. But, uh, and if you need to, one of the things you need to do, do not let this get away from you. If you look at my bodies and all the meshes I brought in, I've got thousands upon thousands of meshes. And, you know, if I need to turn them off, it takes me forever to go through and find them. You need to name all of these. So see right now we're looking inside the structure. And um, you can see what I meant by the landing gear bay is right here. And actually I did design really cool landing gears for this the way they would work. So uh, I just gotta build it everybody. I just don't have the time to build it. everything I wanna build in life. I'm just running out of time um, as I get older. But this gives you a good idea of how it works. Now I did design this originally around a 3W150 engine, but nowadays I would do electric since I hate, uh, well I don't hate, it's just I, I don't wanna fly anything that takes petrol or gas. So um, I wanna keep this video very short. I wanted to show you basically just a, a continuation of how I bring um, these parts here in to ultimately build this and um now some people will say wow you know it took 40 hours to assemble this why don't you just build the rail airplane there's no gluing there's no waiting time there's you know no sanding <laughs> there's there's you just uh fit it in a virtual world here and and i might be wrong it might be less than 40 hours but if i remember right it took me about a month to completely assemble this and test fit everything and make sure it works. Now, the beauty of doing it this way, and I wanna walk you through the steps one more time. I start with sketches literally on a piece of paper of the systems, <clears throat> landing gears and everything I wanna do. I then go out and get three views of the real airplane. And the T-28, there's a bazillion three views out there. Then I went into AutoCAD and actually started um, drawing the fuselage in AutoCAD and the wings were all done in CompuFoil. So the cool thing is, is my wings are designed in CompuFoil, my horizontal stabs designed in CompuFoil, and the vertical stabs designed in CompuFoil, and you can export all those as DXFs to AutoCAD. Then in the AutoCAD environment, you basically design your flaps, your ailerons, and everything into your wings. You design your bulkheads um, in AutoCAD. Then you export out of AutoCAD a DXF, and you import it like this. Then you move all your pieces and parts around until you basically assemble your fuselage. I always build the fuselage first because there's there's more like concave curves and everything in there. With CompuFoil building your wings, you know your wings are right. But when you're building a fuselage and you're trying to make it really scale, you really have a lot of tweaking of where some of the radiuses turn and just just different geometry to get the fuselage to be shaped right. And ultimately, you don't know until you build that fuselage out of balsa wood and start sanding it if you really got it right. I mean, when I did my uh, Mozzie, and the guy doesn't want me to share his name, but a guy built my Mozzie, and uh, it went together really, really good for him. The only thing that he noticed that he thought on scale with the Mozzie was right here, um, the real Mozzie was a little bit fatter coming into the point here, but... Um, you know, until you actually build one of these, um, you really, really don't know. But in the 3D world, it gets you so much closer than just, you know, just, you know, drawing it and then cutting it out and then trying to see if you can fit it together. So I hope you like my videos, everybody. Please subscribe and like the video. And I'm going to try to keep these coming more often. And uh, hopefully... Um, the next video is where I'm actually going to build a wing in CompuFoil. Um, I don't advertise this, and I'm not looking for any work, but once in a while, people will reach out to me to design a wing for them. And I've got a wing coming up that I need to design for a guy. It's a glider wing. He's already picked out which airfoil he wants. He's experimenting. But I'm going to build that glider wing in CompuFoil for you all, and um, we'll walk through all the steps. But that might be the end of the week or maybe beginning of next week that I actually get to that. But who knows? So everybody have a great day, rock on, be safe, uh, like and um, uh, follow my videos everybody and uh, be safe.